Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Mad Monster Lab. For you monster minions. Today's episode is all about beards. Facial hair, how to apply it, how to have fun with it, how to play with it. More than this though, because this is pathetic. This is all I can grow. Sad, really. Thanks. Beards! They can drastically change how your actor looks, be it male or female. Mm -hmm. Although, females should just never have beards, because that's... Wait, unless you're into that and you like that kind of scratchy feeling down on your little... Um... No. We're going to be applying a pre-made lace beard. And then we're going to really amp it up for an HD or film quality look by laying hair on top of that to blend it in. We'll be using yak hair and crimped human hair. We're also going to hand lay a mustache to tie that together. Greetings, my niggas. I mean, mad monster minions. Same shit, different day. Anyway, today we're doing beards, and this is what you're going to need to do beards, facial hair, that kind of stuff. So first up, we need some glue to glue stuff to the skin. I'm gonna go with my old favorite. It is a spirit gum. This is a super matte. There's matte, there's extra strength hold. Um, actually, this is a secret blend of extra strength and super matte mixed together that I did. You can just buy any kind of spirit gum you like. A matte spirit gum is nice. It doesn't have to be super matte. You're gonna need a beard. These come pre-made. That's nice. No, not the kind that you use to ward off all those people from knowing you're gay. This is actually a hair beard. It's on lace. Okay, go on there. Boom, boom, boom. Then you're gonna need a brush for your adhesive and you're gonna need some alcohol. 99% uh, alcohol. Same thing. Alcohol. We're not even on the drunk show. <laughs> not yet. Just... Not yet. Um, this is a piece of linen, muslin, any kind of linen that isn't going to leave fuzz. So you don't want to use like terry cloth or sweat pant or other material. This is just linen. Um, I'm also using a comb, a hair brush, and then I do have some different hair. Now, it's either yak or human. This is yak hair, and it is crimped. I like yak hair for beards. Some people prefer human hair for beards. But it is pre-crimped and in two shades. Um, sometimes, you know, you want to blend them together to make your own. You can just go with something that's a, a little bit lighter than your beard works well. Um, if you want to go for something stylistic, darker can work. Or you can blend the two together for a medium tone. And that's it. Now! What we're going to be doing is prepping this beard. I put a little curl in there with some hot curling irons. You don't have to do that. I might actually take some of that out. But we do have to trim the lace back. The lace, it's hard to see, which is a good thing. You want it hard to see is the actual lace that the hair is tied onto. We want to trim it because if we put it on Zach here, it's going to hit his mouth. And we don't want that to happen. We can put it a little lower and do that. These beards are reusable and they're great. Now these are more theater quality um, beards, we'll call them. The lace isn't very fine. On some really high quality movie lace beards, you can't see the lace at all. It's invisible even to the eye as you're looking at it. Although they can run into the thousands of dollars. For this one, we're using something that's about mm, 40, 50 bucks for this beard. Like I said, it is reusable as long as you take care of it. And I'm always leaving a little more lace because I know I can cut it later if I want to. So we'll go ahead and test fit that again on Zach. And then not on his lip, which is good. It goes right into his hair. And we're going to turn Zach into an Amish guy. I like that. Yeah, I don't like that. I, you know, it's not about you, Zach. Not today. Yeah, it's about right. the beard. Now, Zach, you don't really grow a full big beard, right? That's it. This is it. Now, Zach's a professional actor. So sometimes that actor needs to portray somebody that doesn't look like what you would normally. We're going to change the appearance. You're going to need a full beard. You're Zach the Amish guy today. Can yeah. I at least get a mustache? Can we, we, yeah, we Amish do don't mustache? do that. You're I know, but can tonight we do a mustache? Yeah, we're going to. Right. That's it. <laughs> but, but we're going to do the Amish thing first. We might go into Muslim so you could be a terrorist. 
But <laughs> oh my god, either. No, we're, we're gonna do the beard thing first. Yeah, yeah. And Zach couldn't grow one on his own. It's great if your actor has like six months, can grow a big full beard. You don't always have that, and even if you had six months, it, it's not. Oh no, this is it. That's okay. That's it. Now we can glue directly over his hair with spirit gum. It's cool. It'll come out. So you're okay, and you're safe for that. So we're gonna use a little spirit gum here. I shake that up. It, it sticks to itself, so you better be strong to open that up. And we're gonna put the spirit gum in there. So I'm gonna pour some spirit gum in to my little cup. I also have some 99% alcohol here, just for snorting. Oh. And, no, actually that's just for drink. No, I mean that's just for cleaning my brush. And this is an adhesive brush. I use a round synthetic brush. Some people use sable, different types of things. Now I want to know kind of where my beard is going. Working with spirit gum takes a little bit of practice. I'm gonna show you something about spirit, spirit gum that I didn't know for the longest time, that I learned later on that made my life a whole hell of a lot better. Because I was painting spirit gum on, trying to glue something, and it was slipping off. And I would try and it would just slide off and it just wasn't freaking working. And I, I hated it. So this is, I'm gonna show you the proper way. So we know we're gonna glue. I'm gonna start at the center and work my way out. So right here, Zach, we're gonna start at the center. I'm gonna kind of go where that lace was touching. Now, if I just try and stick this on, it's not gonna stick. It needs the spirit, the alcohol in it, which is the spirit of the gum, needs to evaporate a little bit. Also, I'm gonna tap it with this linen. It does two things. It helps it evaporate a little bit faster and it makes it matte because it actually is adding some texture to that spirit gum and you can feel it getting sticker, stickier, can't you? Yeah. 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 Yeah, so, yeah, that's a good thing. Now we're going to get in here and we're just going to place the beard where we want it. And we kind of position it. Not there. There we go. Right where we wanted it. Good. And while that's there, I'm going to take this part of the comb and just press this into the spirit gum. This way it doesn't flatten the hair. And you can see that lace glues in there. So it takes away the shine. If I didn't tap it, the spirit gum would be shiny. And that would suck. Now also notice I didn't glue the top of the lace. I'm saving that for later. I'm gonna work from the center and work outwards towards the edges. I, sometimes I don't glue underneath here, on, under the chin so much, I'll just tack it because if the actor has to move up and down a lot or is a very animated person, character, that can actually hinder their movement. So, but I'm on the set, so in, in case the camera will show under there or shooting from behind, I'll go in and I'll glue it down really quickly. But now I'm going to work side to side with the spirit gum. And I'm just going to line this up to see where I want it to go. And we're just going to paint it on. Now I'm pretty liberal with the spirit gum. Not like a leftist liberal, but more like, you know, <laughs> a conservative liberal. So I'll put that on there right into his beard. And I'll even go into an area that I went to before. It'll reactivate that glue. I let it dry a little bit. And the spirit in spirit gum was actually ether. It still is on some brands. Other brands, it's alcohol. And see, this will actually glue his beard flat underneath the false beard. It starts to get tacky. You can feel it. And that removes the shine under there. If you don't tap it and you let it stay shiny, you'll have this shiny gloss. Also notice I'm putting both sides of the beard up at the same time so that it will match. Exactly with board have fun. What? <laughs> well, like, I don't want to smile because I don't want them to f*** up the beard. That's right. Thank you, Zach. Now he's starting to look like, uh, you know, the sidekick with the beer. So I'll go immediately to the other side because if I just do one side and keep going on that side, then I go to glue the other side on. If I don't do them evenly, I've got a lopsided beard all of a sudden. And that really sucks. Now, how many of these beards have you applied? Ah, uh, thousands. <laughs> all right. I mean, I started in the theater doing opera. And as you can imagine, we were slapping these beards on hundreds of people throughout an opera season. So doing that. But we used a different remover to take this off, which was brutal. 
I won't get into that. Great. <laughs> we won't be doing that on you. Perfect. Now, in his beard, it takes longer for the spirit gum to evaporate and to uh, dry and get sticky. So you have to take that into account when you're working. Now, if you wait too long, there's a window where the spirit gum will not be sticky anymore. It'll actually dry completely and it won't stick. So you have to find that window. Ooh, there's a little bug there. Did you bring some bugs in there? I mean, when don't I? <laughs> I thought today was your bathing day. I mean, I guess it was. And you can see how I'm getting in here underneath with the comb and pressing that into his actual beard. I'm doing that. And he can actually feel that sticking, can't you? Well, it doesn't hurt or anything, but yeah. Yeah, you can feel that I'm putting pressure on that and it's sticking. Woohoo! Now, you can use different adhesives. I still like spirit gum because of a couple things. Number one, it does go matte. Number two, I can take it out of the lace so I can use this beard again. Yes, I want to use it again. Especially if it's a beard I'm paying up to thousands of dollars for. Another reason why I like it is once it dries, it's no longer sticky. There's some glues that people use, and I do too sometimes depending on the situation, where you have to use a glue and it never really dries. It always stays sticky, like prosate or some silicone adhesives always stay sticky. And what happens throughout the day as you're working, if you're working outside in the desert, like doing a fallout nuka break thing or something like that, it will actually stay sticky and attract dirt. And you'll end up with a dark line wherever the adhesive was. But spirit gum, once it dries, it's no longer sticky. So we're gonna continue on right up into the hairline here, doing our spirit gum application. All right, then I let it air dry a little bit. You'll notice I keep going for a clean area on my linen here, the tap, and you'll see how it almost instantly goes matte when I tap that. And Zach can feel that pulling on his skin. Yep. Yeah, I can. You feel that's good. I'd be worried if I couldn't feel it. I would be too. I wouldn't mean you were. And I love these combs. These are great combs because you can comb out with them and they can go in and press They're really good. If you don't have one of those combs, you can use the back of a brush and get in under the hair. I never like to see people just put their hands here and flatten out the beard and glue it flat to the skin because that ruins the illusion of this hair growing out. But look how that sticks right there. Really good. All right, and then we'll come on this side here, make sure we're lined up properly. I'll peel back a little bit. And once again, we pat with our linen. You can use a uh, red stipple sponge or an orange stipple sponge. The white sponges tend to fall apart when you do this. So I like to use uh, that. Some people use their fingers. In theater, we always use our fingers to tap out the spirit gum. And which is fine. The only problem is you get a really sticky finger and then you can't put it up that spot later. No. Um, you get a real sticky finger and it makes it hard to work as you're going. Nothing's going over but No, not tonight. Yeah. Not ever. <laughs> now, on well. his sideburn, I know I'm going to have to cut this beard here to match up with his sideburn line. So I'm taking the sideburn and I'm actually separating it where it naturally separates. And I'm holding it up and I'm going to put my glue in here. And you see where I'm holding up the, the long hairs on the sideburn there. Now notice I'm gluing right over the short hairs. No worries, though. he doesn't need those. <laughs> now I talked about being able to use some other glues. Yes, you can. Um, you can put a beard on with a silicone adhesive, like a Kryolan medical adhesive, or a uh, Telesis adhesive. They'll stick on and will stick on fairly well, but like I said, throughout the day, they will attract dirt. And it doesn't necessarily stick any better than the spirit gum, I found. Now I'm gonna come in here and cut this beard here under Zach's sideburn, but I wanna make sure that I don't cut the hairs across. So I'm folding it over and cutting just the lace portion. Let's rotate some, the way. Just cutting the lace 
and not cutting the hair across. So I can pull that up. Now I can save this. This could be a mutton chop. It could be, you know, eyebrows for Zach later. You know, whatever we want. But I'll save that. But now if I glue this in, it's going to blend in with his hairline. So I'm going to take that, fold that back. A little fresh spirit gum up in here. Having his business. Shiznes. Do a little tapping. Tap, 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 tap. He loves this. And then you can get that right in there. And like I said, the tapping does two things. It takes away the shine, or helps to take away the shine. And it helps evaporate the spirit out of the spirit of the ether and or alcohol. And you can see now that blends in with his hairline nicely with the lace glued in there. Okay. All right, so we've got it glued up in here into the hairline. I'm going to just tuck a little more in there. I'm going to go into Zach's hair. I can see a little corner hanging up. So just a little more spirit gum right in there. And I'm going to let that dry. I'm not going to tap it just so I can talk to you guys now. So this is a lace beard. It's glued on, on Zach. It looks pretty good. You can style it with your fingers or whatever else. Um, I'm going to go along and get this edge here. And I'm going to do that. I'm going to thin out some of my spirit gum with the alcohol just by dipping the brush in. And I've let this spirit gum dry for a moment. And we're going to pull his hair up and just kind of tap and press at the same time. Get that into the hairline there. That's good. And as it dries, it starts to be heavy. And then I can lay his own hair right over that lace. And you can't even see the lace in there anymore. So now I take my brush, a little bit of alcohol, a little bit of spirit gum, a little more alcohol, kind of mix the two together. And I'm going to come here under some areas that just have the lace. I can even paint over top of the lace. And I'm going to because the glue is going to go through the lace. And this helps to seal the edge down. Also, if you have too much glue or alcohol on there, you can actually lift an edge up which you don't want to do. And I go through. Now there's a little bit of alcohol in there. Can you smell that, Zach? Yeah. And I still also want to press this as it dries to take the shine off. But I have to be careful that I'm not crimping hairs up in the edge of the lace. And I, you can see how it's pulling on Zach's lip here. That's a good thing. But the spirit gum on the lace actually helps the lace disappear into the skin. I'm sure you guys can see that as we're doing it. So you can't see it. Now, that would be good to go for a theater, stage, background character on film. Which I usually am. Well, you no, know, it's, it's not so bad. Like, if I, I have a couple hairs here, I'm gonna show you guys, that are glued down to his skin. I can go through and those, lift those up with a little bit of alcohol. Even if there's a little shine here, I take a little alcohol and I tap it out. Now, I don't know, if you guys zoom in, can you actually see the lace here? I can see it if I look really closely in here. I can see a little bit of lace. And I can't see it at all. No, but the thing is, how does that feel, Zach? You've got a full beard now. It feels like I'm missing something. Like, what are you missing? The mustache. The mustache. Well, you look kind of Amish right now. It's not a bad thing, you know. You look... I probably also look like 20 pounds heavier. Probably a little bit. Because I feel like my face is going rounder. It is? Well, no, your face was rounder. Well, but now, it's, I mean rounder. Like, oh. hey, whoa. <laughs> but we're going to fix that. And I'm going to show you guys how to take a lace beard and make it even better. And actually, we're going to do that by laying hair on, on top of the lace. This is a technique. Whenever you do a beard like this, if you were going to be in the background, I'd say, okay. If you're going to be on stage, okay. If you're going to be on film and you're a featured character, I can't let you go out like this. Of course not. It's not good enough for me. It's not good enough for you. No, so it's not. We're going to use some loose hair, and we're going to lay it on. Now, this hair matches pretty good with that hair. I can blend hair. I'm going to show you how to blend a little bit. 
I'm just going to do it to show you. I took a little bit of this black hair. I'm going to take a little bit of this brown hair. We're going to take it. I'm actually going to kind of stack it, pulling it apart and stacking it. Yes, it's kind of a messy procedure. It gets everywhere. And then I'm going to pull it through a brush. There are things called hackles that are like metal brushes. But I'm using this brush just like a hackle. And you can see how that blends the hair together so it's now brown and black together. Hey, maybe I'll use it just because I got it. What the hell? I got it. So we'll use it. Let me see. <laughs> so I'll do that and then I can even leave it in the hackle or the brush. That's kind of a hair dispenser. So I want to put a mustache on. Sweet. I think you're right. We need a mustache. But you don't just slap a mustache on from the middle. You work actually from the outside in. Opposite of what you would think. Normally you think, oh, mustache, we're going to go here and work out. We don't. We work from the outside in. And that's exactly how I'm going to do this. So I'm going to take a little spare gum where I want to put the hair. And I know I want to put the hair here. A little extra hair. So I'm going to put it where I want it because I want to give it a moment to dry. And I'm going to take some of my hair here and some scissors. These are small scissors. Um, I use different size scissors all the time. Bigger scissors, smaller ones, it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to grab some hair here. I don't need too much, just enough for the side of the mustache. And I'm going to cut that off. Now I've got a proper amount of hair here, but I don't have the right angle. I don't want to just glue the hair flat and I don't want to have it sticking out. I want it kind of at an angle as if it was growing out of his skin. So I'm actually going to cut the hair at that angle. And I'm going to cut it right here. I'm going to show you here. Almost at a, well, it's not quite a 45, maybe it's a 50 degree angle. So then I can put that on there so it looks like it's growing out of the skin. And I'll just trim out any weird things going on. And I'm going to tap this spare gum here. Once again, like I did the other stuff. You can see it goes more matte there. Took away the shine. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to press this hair into that and I'm going to help guide it. I'm not actually pressing down with the end of the brush. I'm just kind of guiding the hair where I want it. Now all the hair won't stick but most of it will. And you can see now that it is coming out at an angle. It's not glued flat against his skin. If it was glued flat, it would look horribly thick. And the trick is to have it at a bit of an angle. It's also a little thick right now, and I know that I'm gonna thin it out. But I want the spirit gum to dry completely before I do that, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this side. Okay, now we've got both sides of our beginning of our mustache glued on. But it's a little thick, like I said. I like to actually pull out some of the hair. And you can do that and just kind of thin it out. It gives more of a realistic look of hair growth. And you can do it like that, or you can actually take a comb to it and just kind of comb it out. And do that, and then you can go through and trim it up. And I'll go ahead and trim this. Now, I don't just cut it straight across, but I go on the bias along with the hair growth the way that it would normally grow. And this way it'll blend into the beard naturally. And now you look like a Muslim. <laughs> Jihadi! No, all right, there we go. So we did that. And we'll go ahead and connect. <laughs> he is, you are. You look at that. And you see how it blends in nicely, and we've cut the hair in there and just trimmed it up. I'm going to go ahead and continue this mustache and this hair laying technique on here. I'm using that hair that I blended which is perfectly fine. Now the trick is, mustaches don't grow, grow out sideways, they do grow down. So I'm going to apply the spirit gum across Zach's upper lip here. I'll put a dot there where he's got a little thin spot. And do that. And I'm gonna cut my hair. Now this is gonna look funny at first because I'm gonna be laying the hair almost straight across and it's gonna kinda of look like a, a walrus mustache almost. Now I cut the hair straight across, you can see that against his jacket, but I'm also going to go ahead and cut that angle behind it. 
so that I can lay it on and it kind of sticks out a little bit. And one, two, I'm also going looking for strays. I go ahead and tap this. It'll go a little matte, start to dry a little bit. I use the edge of the brush to guide it. And I do use the end of the brush to push it in just a little bit because it's a little more difficult doing these thin little areas. But I don't want to squish it flat. I'm going to go ahead right away and do the other side. Get the hair for that. And get that in there. Now I do want to continue this in through the center here. There was no glue there, so it's almost like doing glitter work when you were a kid. The hair only sticks where there is glue. Come on, you look like the kid who ate the paste. No. Did you eat the paste? No. Who was the kid that ate the paste in the class? You remember him? Yeah, his name was Derek. <laughs> Derek Dauhauer. <laughs> Did he really? No. <laughs> <laughs> I was a Play-Doh guy myself. Yeah. Yeah, Play-Doh was more like the caviar. Because it was salty, you know. <laughs> Not to mention, they made it look like food, you know, in those Play-Doh play sets. <laughs> they had the burger making machine and all that crap. Remember? Mm -hmm. It looked like food to me. No, I thought it was all game on. Not to mention, I took the term mud pie, literally. Okay, so we have our first layer of our mustache. Our mustache is not finished. Because I want to do at least two, if not three layers. And add shape to that mustache. And that shape is all done with the glue. Just like doing glitter. Because the hair will only stick where there is glue. So I'm going to go in here now. I'm going to paint my second layer of glue. Not out as far. I'm right, yeah, like so. All right. Once again, you go straight in with the hair. And while that dries, I'm going to lay some thin hair along the side here, just to make things a little more real. And I'm going to thin down that spirit gum with a little bit of alcohol, cook some alcohol, put it in my brush. And I'm going to go along here, and I'm just going to do a swipe of hair here. And I'm going to do a little peek right there, going up towards the eye there, just for the hell of it. Nothing crazy. I'm going to get my hair ready, and I want my hair to be really thin, really see-through. You can see it's like sparse hair. I want it sparse. Really sparse, and I'm going to cut that, and I'm going to cut it still on an angle. Even though it looks like I'm cutting it straight across, I'm not. I'm still cutting it on an angle. I'm going to take this right along here. Go through here. And along with the growth, I'm checking the, the area of the growth and then where I put that little peak. And I want to put this hair in here. I just want to kind of sit it in there. And I'm going to hold on to some of the hair and leave some behind. You see how that works? That's a really cool technique. You can just press a couple of those hairs in, pull that out, and it leaves just a few hairs behind. Tap that in, pull some out. So with this gradient, yes, this, this yeah, I'm gonna call it the hobo gradient. Yeah, because it, it makes it look even more rustic. Yeah, because it's not the clean shave look. Well, yeah, I mean basically it's to emulate natural hair growth because it, it starts out sparse up on the cheeks. Sometimes I've seen guys with hairs growing right out under their eyes, but it, it starts to go thicker and thicker towards the jawline, and then come through. So this makes for a more realistic look, and you can even put some direction into the hairs, comb it into the beard, and it blends in with them. And if we take a look right there at that side, how realistic that looks. You know, just going through on the side there. This reminds me of the beard that Will Ferrell has in Step Brothers. I traveled 500 miles to give you my seed. Remember, Jack? Can I finish the beard up to the other side? Can you? I don't know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. All right, cool. Oh, <laughs> I wasn't sure if you guys were going to film it, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. 
All right, so I did the hand laying of the hair here on the beard. Now there are a couple things that it does. Aside from making it a little more patchy and natural and a realistic growth, it actually covers the lace. So if you have any lace that's showing, you can cover it with the hair. Now there is one thing that I see. We have a buckle here on your chin. Fucking buckles. Yeah. Well, that happens. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. We're going to cut his lip off. No. Actually, we're going to come right in here with the scissors. And I'm going to cut the lace. Actually lift it up. And cut the lace. I'm going to use a little bit of alcohol there. I'm going to, I'm, you guys probably can't even see that. But I can. Yeah, explain a buckle. A buckle is uh, just an area where the lace isn't laying right, but bubbling up a little bit. And I know because of where it is and the shape it is, it's just going to continue to do that throughout your shooting day. So by coming here and actually snipping it like that, it puts almost a V in it. That alcohol has reactivated the spirit gum, and I'm pressing it flat with the end of the brush, and that takes care of our buckle. It's not going to hurt the beard any throughout the day as we use it. I mean, but beards don't have souls, so you can hurt them all you want. <laughs> but this gives Zach a mustache and a beard. The hair color blends in with his fine. We can style it with our hands and do all that and just really enjoy it. Now, with beards this length, do yeah. they always come this length when you buy them? No. 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 You can buy shorter. You can buy shorter or, you know, we did a little, you remember when we were doing the, uh, the little intro there, we had this long ass beard on you. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And we did this long thing. And oftentimes, I'll buy a longer beard and cut it, you know? So if you had a long beard like this and it needed to be that length, there's no reason why I couldn't cut it to sure. this length. But what I want to talk about is maintenance and upkeep on this. What's going to happen is it'll pop up from time to time. You'll have to go in with some more spirit gum and press it down in a spot. You'll have to put other adhesive down. You might have to lift it up and clean out under it with some alcohol and glue it back down. If you are using one of those types of beards where you're using an adhesive that attracts dirt, you might have to take off all the hair that you hand laid on, like say at lunchtime, clean it off with alcohol, and go ahead and redo it for the rest of the day to make it through the day. The other thing that you have to be aware of is that color changes. Even the spirit gum will go a little pale throughout the day. So I keep a little alcohol, of my alcohol activate colors, you know the ones I use? Mm -hmm. Maybe something that's got a little bit of a ruddy tone to it, so I can just swipe over that if that tends to show up. And that really takes care of it. And there's so many times where you'll see an actor at the end of the day and they're handing you the beard. There's nothing worse than that because you can actually damage the lace. Each one of these hairs are hand tied. Yeah, but see, with the like the spirit gum you use, the last thing I'm going to do is be like, hey, whoop, there you, you go. Right. Now that's another safety issue because. Believe it or not, the adhesives that we use are pretty strong, and they can actually remove the first one, two layers of your epidermis. You won't even notice it, you know? Oh, it feels like it's tugging, or it feels like it's scraping a little bit, but oh, I'm okay. And you'll feel okay until the next day when you wake up and it looks like your face slid down the sidewalk. So it's always best to have a professional uh, remove it. And we're gonna do that right now. We're gonna remove this shit, what do you say? Let's take a few pictures first. All right, we'll take a couple pictures. Removal is important, and taking a beard off is just as important as any other prosthetic or makeup. We have to use a solvent to get it off because, let's face it, ah, yeah, bang, bang, yeah, ow, okay, that's, that's on there, huh? <laughs> and well, it was more, it's on the pulling on my beard, the skin, not so much. The skin, not so much, this but, no, no, that doesn't no, hurt because it's on there, yeah, it's on I'm there. I'm sure if you pulled harder, it would hurt, yeah, but you were pulling the hairs, on there. right? He has a beard under the beard. So we have to take it off with the solvent. We're going to use alcohol, 99%. And I'll be honest with you, it's uncomfortable for the performer because of the fumes. So I like to work on the sides first, and then I very quickly work on the middle in order so there's not too much alcohol sitting there. So the first thing that I do is I saturate the hair by the temples. This does two things. It helps to loosen the glue from the hair and also the alcohol is draining downwards along his skin. Then I go ahead and I brush along the top where I laid the hair. And this does two things. It loosens that hair and it flows downwards. Yeah, I can feel it flowing. Too. Yep. Yep. And I do this all on purpose. I'm staying away from the center so he's got room to breathe. Now I'm going to go through here and I'm very quickly, I kind of pull lightly 
But I also let the alcohol, the solvent, do the work here on the side of the beer. And I can't even feel that. Yeah, and he's keeping his ear, his eyes closed because I'm flying through with alcohol. And that can get into your eyes and burn quite a bit, I know from experience. That vodka is so good. Oh. <laughs> okay, so now I'm getting towards the center here. Can we keep the mustache on a little bit longer? Yeah. I like take the, take the beard off. I want to see if it looks okay, like Okay, we'll see what it looks like in the mustache. <laughs> so we'll take the beard off. Now, I'm going to saturate under his jaw. So right through here, I'm just going to paint this on. Now, we have to remember, I have to remember, that it's glued to his hair underneath. So I have to be careful and really soak this area. More alcohol is better because it's going to really saturate the area. It's not good for him breathing-wise, but he'll tell you it kind of sucks. We got a little Fu Manchu action going on there. And here's our beer. And it can be used again. It'll be cleaned and then put away. If it needs to be redressed, it can be redressed as well. Now I can go ahead and trim up this mustache so it doesn't look so awkward. Thank you, sure. to look like a hipster. Oh, no, I don't like it. <laughs> so he's just got the sash on. Either that or you look like you just walked out of village people. I don't like either of those. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to take that off. All right, so this is going to kind of suck because it's going to run down over his lip. Okay. So we just saturate the whole area and take this right off. Not a pleasant procedure, I can be honest with you. You got that uh, paper towel hanging back? Take this. Hold on two seconds. Ready? And one, two, I'll have you wipe that away. Go ahead and wipe away. I'm going to let Zach wipe away the alcohol there. Okay, so that takes care of the worst of it. Really, the alcohol, no. No, it's, it's just st still strong. It is strong. Right. So I'm using a little bit of mirror state and a brush and applying it liberally to Zach and his, well, I wish I was a beard. And <laughs> scruff. Basically, using the mirror state to take off the remover instead of just straight alcohol will save that skin from drying out. So he'll be better to go again the next day. And he'll just clean up with regular cleansers and a moisturizer at night. You know, he keeps a moisturizer and he moisturizes nightly. <laughs> and that no. way we can go ahead and glue him in the beard tomorrow for day number two. But basically, once Zach cleans up and he does go home, and I talked about him having a moisturizer, I do mention that to every actor that I'm working with, because your skin goes through some stress. We are actually, it's almost like exfoliating. And when you're doing that every day, which is, can be stressful to your skin and irritating, the moisturizer helps to protect you a little bit throughout the day. In fact, like actors that would perform on serials like uh, Star Trek or something where they were in prosthetics every day, in their contracts was worked out that they would get a facial at the end of the week and you know, heavy intensive moisture treatments. And it really helps out. So take care of yourself, be smart. Be working with solvents and chemicals and glues. So always err on the side of safety. Now I'm gonna tell you about cleaning off the beard. Okay, so we have a little acetone, also nail polish remover, a little metal dish. Now the cool thing about acetone, people will be like, why don't you wash your beard with water? Because actually, believe it or not, water will take the styling and the crimp out of the beard and it'll just go straight and actually ruin it. So acetone will not remove the setting. So we take acetone and a toothbrush. And I'm just going to clear out an area here to work. And we want to get the list leftover adhesive out of the lace. And it's really just a lot of poking and pushing the acetone. If you have an area that's really bad, you can actually and let's say this was really bad, it's not. I can actually soak the beard in the acetone. It's not gonna hurt the hair, because the hair is organic. Now what happens if you buy a beard that isn't organic? If it's, if it's not, if it's like a synthetic, synthetic beard, yeah. and you go ahead and dip that in it, it's gonna melt. Awesome. Yes, yeah, so you're gonna end up with a whole lot of no beard. Yeah. And that's the whole key to this. Now here where I haven't removed it all, you can see it's starting to turn white. 
That's what will typically, typically happen um, throughout the day with the spear gum as it starts to dry out. And why I'll go over it with a touch of alcohol or whatever. And you'll also get some fine hairs that might go a little stray. I'll go ahead and comb those back into place. And it takes a while to really clean a beard out well. You go over it three, maybe four times and really clean it out. And actually, probably after a beard's been worn three or four times, you're going to have to reset your curl if you've had a style to it. If it's just been crimped, you're probably good for at least ten times of wearing it. But if you're actually styling in styles, about three or four times, and then you'll have to restyle the whole beard. What we can see there now, looking good. We have our little nick where we uh, cut out for our dart for that buckle, so we know that won't happen when we put it on here again. I'm just going to hold it up to you, Zach. So we can put that up to Zach, and there it goes. It'll be ready to go on another day. And there you go. So we'll put it away, and we've got our beard. Hey, Mad Monster Lab Minions, Rallis Khan here, and I just want to tell you guys that Friends Beauty Supply is where we get most of our materials for the Mad Monster Lab, and you can too. In fact, you can visit them in North Hollywood at their store, or you can go to this link here, help them out, show them that you love the Mad Monster Lab because they love us and we just want to give it back to them. So there you have it, high quality professional beards. Unlike the one I'm wearing right now, it's not good. <laughs> if you guys like this episode, go to the videos below. And don't forget to subscribe. Leave a comment below if you have any questions, and you can tweet us at Mad Monster Lab. Or Rallis Khan. Guys, you got beard envy, huh? A little bit. Yeah. It's okay.